Hey everyone, welcome to Pai's Kitchen. Super excited today for my first Korean recipe on Pai's Kitchen. Now, I love Korean food. Thai people love Korean food because it's spicy, it's strong flavor, just our kind of thing, you know. And so I am making kimchi fried rice, one of my favorite Korean dishes. And in Korean, that's called kimchi bokumbap. And my Korean friends, I'm sure you will tell me how I did on that pronunciation. Super easy and delicious, definitely weeknight friendly. Let's get started. Okay. Let's talk kimchi first. So this is the brand that I buy from the store. If you've got a favorite brand that you want to recommend, definitely put it in the comments. I'm sure lots of people would love to know. There were lots of options at the store for sure. Now, what I've done, I have taken the kimchi, which is fermented, uh, mostly Napa cabbage. This one also has some daikon radish as well. And I've drained out the juice because I want to put the juice in with the sauce. So that's why I need to really drain it out. So I push it, push it, push it and get out every last bit. And now I'm going to chop up my kimchi into little fried rice friendly pieces. And now the heart of the fried rice, which is the sauce. So here's the kimchi juice that I drained. And now I'm going to add the second most important ingredient of this dish. And that is the Korean red pepper paste or gochujang. So there are lots of different brands. And when you go to a Korean grocery store, you're like faced with a million of them. I chose the one that says extra hot because that's how I like it. But you can definitely choose a regular milder one if you want. Um, again, if you've got recommendations, your favorite brand of gochujang that you like, let me know in the comments. Um, and it's this luscious, thick, spicy, rich umami paste that's good on like everything. <laughs> so I'm going to um, take like around a tablespoon of this stuff. And you can definitely go more or less depending on um, how strong the flavor you want it to be. Okay, I'm going to give this a stir so that the gochujang is dissolved and it'll make the actual mixing of the fried rice so much easier afterwards. All right, I'm going to add some sesame oil, toasted sesame oil for that iconic nutty aroma of Korean food. Now I'm gonna add some soy sauce. If this is your first time making it, I would just put a teaspoon at this point because people's kimchi and gochujang is gonna have different levels of salt. So I wouldn't put um, all of it in. You can always adjust at the end. And to cut all that saltiness and the tartness, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to balance everything. And that's it, that's the sauce. That looks good already. That looks like it would be good on eggs. Mm. And now the protein. You don't have to add any protein, but I like to add pork. And for this, I love to use very thinly sliced pork. And you can usually get that at Asian grocery stores where they sell meat pre-sliced for hot pot. Perfect. So this is pork jowl. Um, you can do, of course, chicken or whatever meat you like. And it comes already cut in thin, thin pieces. And the benefit is it's nice and fatty and tender. And because it's so thin, you won't ever get big chewy pieces of pork. And I'm just going to season this with some soy sauce just so that the pork itself has some flavor. And by the way, I am using a Japanese soy sauce for this. If you can get Korean soy sauce, even better. Give that a big mix. I just love pork jowl. It's like my favorite cut on the pig. Look how much fat there is. So much marveling. Ah, so good. Um, and that is pretty much it. Other than that, I've just got some long beans because I'm Thai and I love long beans. And it's just a great crunch that goes well with the fried rice. You can obviously use other vegetables that you like. You don't even have to put any vegetables if you don't want to. So rice. So for Korean food, you want to use short grain rice. This is actually the same kind of rice that I use for my onigiri rice ball video. And if you missed that, I'll put the link right up here. It's a great video. Um, and, but it's Japanese rice. If you've got Korean rice, great. As long as it's short grain, you'll be fine. Because I knew I was making this for fried rice, I used a little bit less water, especially for this because the sauce is quite liquidy. So if the rice is too wet, you'll have a bit of a harder time. And if you put a little less water, you don't even have to let this get cold or anything. Like I'm going to use this still warm. I'm going to use it right away and it'll be totally fine. All right, let's get cooking. So when you weren't looking, I went and fried up a sunny side up egg, which is absolutely essential in this dish. Like it is not an optional thing. It really, really makes the dish, I think. Anyway, make sure the yolk is still a little runny, a little brown on the edges. Perfect. In this wok, so I fried the egg in this wok. I'm just using the leftover oil here. Another reason why you want to make sure you squeeze all the juices of the kimchi out, because if you don't, this will spatter quite a bit. 
So now you're basically infusing the oil with the kimchi flavor, maybe even get the kimchi a little bit charred. Mm. That smells so good right now. I can even smell some of the lettuce charring a little bit. I'm gonna go in with the pork. And you don't have to stir it all the time. Let it sit and char a little bit. Get that smoky flavor going. Woohoo! All right, the pork is 80% done. Not 100% done. I'm gonna go in with, oh, not the rice, the long beans. Give it a good toss. And now I don't wanna cook the long beans to death. I do want them to be really crunchy. But now I'm gonna go in with my rice and the sauce. I'm gonna pour the sauce right over the rice. That'll help break up the rice and it'll help you distribute the sauce more easily. And now just stir away. If there are any rice lumps, you wanna just press it down with a spatula. This short grain rice is a little stickier than jasmine rice, so if you're not used to cooking with it, you just, you know, it might be a little more challenging, but it'll happen, see? Mm. And I just crank the heat because I wanna dry out the rice, get some toasty flavor going. And believe it or not, it's done. Look at that. I just love how when you use short grain rice to make fried rice, it glistens. Like it just glistens in the sauce. Ooh, get some toasty rice bits. All right, and now I'm gonna just finish this off with some toasted white sesame seeds. Lots of toasted white sesame. That's a nice nutty flavor to it. And of course, we'll top it off with our runny, beautiful fried egg. Ta-da! Look how easy that was. And it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited for this. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Look at that perfect yolk. Ooh, smells spicy. Mmm. Oh, it's so flavorful. Oh, spicy, tart, umami. There's so much going on. Really great texture from the beans and also from the kimchi. And that egg, that creaminess of the egg mellows everything out. Being short grain rice, it's a little, a little chewier. So you get to really chew on it. The pork is super tender. This is so good and so easy. And just look at that. I mean, like you put this on the table and everyone's gonna be like salivating instantly. So the recipe, as always, will be on pieskitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so you'll never miss an episode. And I will see you next time for your next delicious adventure.